<sighs> What's up, crew? All right, so I promised you I would make a um, wealth series, basically, and I'm just going to put it on my Math Head video YouTube channel. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know, I started Math Head so I could explain uh, the f the mathematics of life. So the different financial mathematics, the different mathematics involved in metabolism and health and fitness uh, and stuff like that. I love math, uh, Adam, you know. And um, yeah, I'm a math head, not a meth head. So um, this video though is for my peeps. Um, there's like one subscriber, so hey, I don't know who you are, but you know, if you watch this video, you can learn something if you need to know the basics of investing, okay? So this is going to be the basics of investing. Um, if you watch this video though, you could invest and be good and employ this strategy and in my opinion, be totally fine. Like you don't need to hear all the news and all the other BS stuff that's out there. You just need to know basics and that can lead to a good result. But as a mathematician or someone really interested in math with a degree that says I'm a mathematician, no, you're a mathematician if you love math. It doesn't matter, you don't need a degree, you don't need any of that, you just need a curiosity and a desire to learn this stuff, okay? So investing math can get extremely complicated and convoluted and look weird as hell, but I'm going to break it down to you. I'm not going to talk about really the math aspect of it, just what I do personally. All right. So that way, you know, Steven, Adam, uh, it, when you guys watch this, if you don't invest already, uh, this way you can think about it and perhaps implement it. Uh, but a huge disclosure and as someone who loves to read the theory of investing, the math behind it, as well as being an investor for over eight years now, I, I think that I have a decent handle on what's going on. And so the number one thing I would recommend is do not invest any money that you are not willing to lose, you know, emotionally, mentally, and that you literally can't lose because it's part of your budget. When I see people investing on leverage uh, or talking about, you know, just use other people's money. Well, that money is not free, okay? You can't just go get someone else's money without consequences, all right? When I started my first business and I leveraged it, I got royally screwed and I had to go through a bankruptcy, which I'm still affected by, all right? Yeah, my credit scores back up to like 740, but it doesn't matter. You have a bankruptcy on your thing. You're not going to get qualified for really good credit cards. You're not going to get qualified for really good loans in general. If you know you want to buy a house to live in, to house hack, to any of that crap, uh, I'll talk about that stuff in other videos. But <clears throat> I just recommend against leverage, especially for someone like you and me. You know, just a regular average person who works nine to five or even as a uh, entrepreneur and has made a business, whatever. Like if you, if you don't have the money or the ability to get out of something and you really don't know the math of the stuff behind it, leveraging is just, it's not wise. And I know there were a couple like Yale professors who wrote a paper on leveraging and like why you should do it as a younger person. And I just think because of the psychological aspect and the financial aspect of the all the unknowns in the market, if you lose your own money that you didn't need because you budgeted it out, then you're good. But if you lose a bunch of money that you've leveraged and the investors who've given you that money to leverage are like, hey, hey, we want our money back or we're going to send you into bankruptcy or you're going to have to be in, a, in debt, like you're not going to, it's going to destroy your life. So... I think what the academic professors who wrote that literally were just talking about um, a mathematical equation and they weren't factoring in real life, okay? So what I have looked at in the data, and when I say data, I mean like uh, Robert Schiller's S&P 500 stock data it goes back to like the 1800s, whatever, whatever. I don't know, but 
this the book that I wrote. I mean, you guys know about it. No money, no stuff. Um, and if you don't have this, holla at your boy. I'll give you the PDF for it. And the PDF is what you want anyways. I just made this physical book so I could feel like a, a, an awesome guy, a cool guy, and have it in my library. Be like, I'm an author. <laughs> uh, it's not selling at all. But literally, I don't even care. I just feel super accomplished. But yeah, that book is basically everything that I talk about in investing. It's my whole um, research, um, everything that I've, I've researched about and is put into that book for investing. And as I develop like the different tools and stuff, all the spreadsheets and everything to calculate different things, um, I have a lot of them in there like the budget spreadsheet, mortgage calculator spreadsheet and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff's free online, but I'm a nerd, so I had to make it in Google Google Sheet. You know me, um, and it'll it'll be linked in there. So, like I said, you know, even if you have my book, if I gave you a copy, just download the PDF. I mean, it's uh, five dollars in the public, so just email me uh, to get that PDF, and then it's gonna be auto updated. You know, and you'll get an email with a new link to the new book and yada yada. Anyways. That's what I talk about in my book. So that Yale data on the 500, uh, S and P 500, basically it it showed that if you hold your money, you just keep investing a certain amount of money, uh, or even if you invested once and you left it in there, you didn't touch it. I did 20 year rolling returns. So I'm not going to get super, there's no point in getting super technical in this video. It's just the beginner intro the basics of investing video. If you hold it, held your money in that uh, S&P and you bought the S&P index, and what does that mean? The S&P index, uh, for those who don't know, I know Adam, you're a wizard. You already know about investing mostly, but uh, for those of you who don't know, the S&P 500 is the 500 largest by cap uh, capitalization rate. Like Basically, the biggest companies, the biggest 500 companies, in the US. All right. So that alone, if you invest in, and, and that's not really diversified either, even if you invest in every single of those 500 companies and you look at the prices of each of those companies, it's like, what, a hundred dollars or 200 or a thousand or, you know, tons of money for one share of some of those companies. It's like, how can I invest into that? Well, the answer, the, what I use are ETFs, index funds, and uh, they're the low, low cost ones. So basically Vanguard um, and some other companies pop up because what I use is Wealthfront. Uh, I have slowly gotten away from Wealthfront just because of the amount of money I'm putting into the investments. And after $10,000, they won't manage it for free. So um, but you can set up a Roth IRA, all this, the retirement account stuff. You can set up uh, an investment account and a savings account. So Wealthfront, literally, if you don't get any further in this video, go to Wealthfront, sign up, and then the money that you budget, because you better be on a budget, is the money that you want to put into the investment account. I personally picked a risk tolerance of 4.5 uh, because... Over their historical returns, it showed that basically a 4.5 to a 7 risk uh, was returning the same thing. I understand that they haven't been in business you know, long enough to go through the crashes and long enough to go through all of the market volatility and the stock market's been doing nothing but going up for you know, a long time now. So everyone thinks, oh, everything's good, investing's easy, just jump your, dump your money in the stock market. You know, but that's why I tended to go a little lower. Lower risk score just means that they're gonna put more things in your portfolio, more things in your investment account that are um, that are basically lower risk. And again, I'm not gonna get into how these things are classified as risky or not risky, but just like I said, you know. Budget the amount of money you're willing to lose. So if you add up, you go through all your stuff and add up all the amount of money that you spend on just ridiculous stuff, you know, going out to eat too much, going to the movies, 
uh, Netflix subscriptions, all this stuff, and see how much money that is per year. You know, and I personally like for easy numbers, like 10%, 10 to 15% of your after tax money. That's important. You want to, you know, you need to pay the taxes and make sure that's square. You don't want to budget your before tax money. So 15%, 10 to 15% of your after tax money, you know, so if, you know, if you're making 30 grand or 40 grand, uh, let's say you make 30 grand after all said and done with taxes or or 36 grand to make it easier. So that's going to be $3,000 a month. Okay. That's, that's your net take home pay after taxes, let's say. And if you divulge or divulge, if you, uh, just give 10% of that to an investment account like Wealthfront, you set up auto invest. That's one of the things uh, one of the benefits of Wealthfront too is automatic. You set it up. It takes the money out of your account that you delegate and it just goes into investing. You don't think about it. You just keep doing it. 10%. All right. That's $300, $300 a month, every month, up market, down market, whatever you invest. All right. And then, uh, basically after, uh, a couple years, you're going to reach that point to where they start charging fees of managing your money because it'll be over $10,000 in the investment account. Their fees are pretty small, but still you can even create a better solution using something like Vanguard um, and and uh, try to create an automated profile where basically you're just automatically investing in a certain amount. But then you have to do all the things yourself. You have to rebalance your own portfolio, which just means that if you've got, let's say 50% stocks and 50% bonds in that portfolio, which Wealthfront, you don't have to think about any of this. You answer questionnaire stuff. That's why I think, you know, like a risk tolerance set at 4.5 or five or whatever, and you're good. Okay. The stock market's probably going to crash. I mean, I mean, it, it goes up and down, but Look at the stock market. It's insanely high. It's ridiculous. Who knows? You don't know. And that's the thing. Investing, no one knows anything. You look at the historical data. You try to get a good feeling in your tummy. But at the end of the day, no one really knows what's going to happen. You try to predict companies that are going to be amazing. Oh, Fitbit's going to change the world. And they have an IPO. And then that it tanks. You know, and then everyone loses tons of money. And and that's another reason why you don't want to just go buy a stock or two because ignore everyone. Basically, don't watch YouTube uh, for investing advice. There's so many scammer morons who just try to take your money, take your time by the views because they're getting paid a ton from ad revenue and different sponsorships and get Weebles for free stocks. Oh my God. Like, the best thing you can do is just ignore those people, put your money into something like Wealthfront, answer their questions, start using their savings account. Okay, this another good benefit or another benefit of Wealthfront is it has a savings account that earns interest and pretty high amount of interest. Like before the interest rates, it, it's tied to the uh, Federal Reserve's interest rates that they set. And I'll make another video on that if you guys want me to, but basically it, when the the federal interest rates were like two something percent, uh, that's what Wealthfront was paying two something percent. And if you are not a huge spender and you're making 2% a year just for saving your money, that's amazing, you know? So that's why I really want you guys to start saving a ton of money. And then that 10% to 15% chunk per year, put it into honestly, the, like the wealth front investment, robo advisor, whatever, you know, there's other ones out there, but I, I haven't used them. So I can't recommend them, uh, betterment and stuff like that. You can look into it yourself, see the fees because the fees are the super important thing. Um, as well as their investing algorithm with basically how they divvy up the, the investments. But the majority of these robo advisors are using, um, a, uh, variation of like the CAPM model, um, or the modern portfolio theory generally. And don't worry about it. Like, I really want you to know that stuff. I mean, cause I love math 
And I think that if you understand mathematics, you can understand the limitations of these theories. But you don't have to understand the limitations of these theories if you literally invest money that you can burn. Okay, so the the ten percent thing. That's why I like it, you know, and that's why I'm confident when I tell my friends and family when I tell you guys, only invest money that you're willing to lose. Don't leverage that crap. Don't don't get into any of that stuff. You know that stuff. If you want to be a gambler and and you want your risk level to go through the roof, all right. Learn from me. Learn from my mistakes, and that's that's pretty much it. You know, uh, you can get caught up on stuff like Warren Buffett. Everyone touts him the greatest investor of all time. Oh well, he just looked for companies that were undervalued. Basically, Warren Buffett was a statistician. He looked at the statistics of a company. Historical stuff, though. It's all historical. So, and he tried to determine. Oh, okay, well. Basically, Warren Buffett was doing fundamental analysis. He was looking at their balance sheets and their um, their profits and losses and everything you can find on Yahoo Finance. Um, I mean, let me know, you guys. I'll make videos on how to find that stuff. Uh, but I, I really think it's important that you just get started in investing because, like I said, I know investing is extremely risky. Even if people are like, oh, it's just good. You just use this formula. No, invest the money that you're willing to lose. I can't say that enough. All right, guys, I don't want you as my friends, you know, to lose your hard earned money. All right. I mean, you're going to lose anyways. You go out to dinners and you, like I said before, so you don't want to lose a ton of it. Um, if you're willing to take on a ton of risk, then you, you budget that out in your, in your budget and you can only live, uh, by, live a, a good life and still spend like 50 or 60 or more percent of your income on investing if you have like no bills. All right. So, I mean, I was lucky enough to have the companies that, you know, that I do that made me wealthy enough to have that position of, okay, well I can throw more money at the investments, but I still don't throw a huge portion of my money to investments, um, in, in stock market and stuff like that. Like I like to think of new companies to invest personally, uh, to create and uh, invest in that. But I mean, guys, everything in life is a gamble. All we can do is look at historical data. Uh, and also <laughs> I've been holding my remote this whole time. Um, check this out guys, since I put this on YouTube, oh man, I'm a friggin' a real YouTuber now. Since we're talking about investing, let's throw that up to the green. Yeah, there we go. It looks a little bit teal on screen, but yeah, what do you guys think? It's like, uh, it's pretty cool. I thought it was nice, you know, a nice little addition to the office. It's something nice to look at like, oh, okay, this looks nice. I'll keep it up here. But anyways, guys. Um, I'm rambling on at this point. You know everything you need to know in under 20 minutes. The basics of investing. Pretty much robo-advisor. It's based on modern portfolio theory variance. I'll make a video on that stuff. Don't get caught up in uh, the, the craziness of investing in day trading and options trading and all that stuff. Uh, that is for extremely... <laughs> Uh, knowledgeable investors and most of the, most of those people get beat. So the data is showing that a lot of institutional investors, that's what they call the investors who are the big guys, the hedge fund managers, the people who basically make markets. And that term means that they can make markets fluctuate up and down because a stock's price is determined literally on who will buy and who will sell. If it's going for 10 bucks, that means someone's willing to sell it for 10 bucks. But if it it won't sell for 10 bucks unless people are willing to buy it for 10 bucks. So the buyer and seller have to come to an agreement and that's how the price of stocks basically fluctuates. But unfortunately right now you have huge money and I mean, GameStop was a very great example of this. You know, you've got a large amount of money with shorts uh, short selling stocks, and this is getting a little more technical. So if you don't want to hear this stuff, just, you know, end the video, go to wealthfront.com and open up an account guys. All right. Text me with any questions or put them in the comments below. If you don't know me personally, and I'll try to answer that stuff when I have time for sure. Um, but 
I love helping people out. I want to help you out. Don't listen to the scam scum. That's why I like to call those people the polished turds on YouTube who are just like, you know, they've got the nice lights and they think that uh, they're they're super slick and they tell you to uh, it's just garbage. Don't listen to people on YouTube. All right. But that's it for this video. I love you guys. Bye.